Hello. Hello. Hopefully this works. God damn it. Um, I lost everybody. God. Mm. Well, we're back for another live. Previously, of course, my thing wasn't working. Um, it's working now. Sorry, guys. I had an extra mic, and I guess I didn't set it up correctly. But we're back. Today, we're going to talk about networking and cold calling. Sorry for the technical difficulty. We can hear you now. Smiley face. Yeah, I screwed up. It's been working before. I don't know what the problem is. Um, we're going to talk about networking and cold calling just because I've been getting that question a lot. And I think it's probably the biggest mystery when it comes to banking and just life as a whole. Um, so we're going to talk about cold calling and networking today. Um, let me know if you guys can hear the audio fine. I don't necessarily have like a discussion topic list or anything. Um, if anything, I would have you to answer any questions pertaining to networking and cold calling. But I think, especially in banking, cold calling and networking are essentials, but in jobs in general, I think nowadays especially, um, just because we're becoming more remote-based and jobs are becoming more centered around um, getting it through remote work. Uh, routes and methodologies, I think cold calling and networking is becoming even more important. Um, I think the main issues associated with cold calling and networking is the purpose behind them. When you approach cold calling and networking, is it, do you mention, hey, I'm calling you because I want your job. I'm calling you because I want the referral. I'm calling you because I want you to refer me to this position. Um, how bluntly do we say these things? Um, and if, if there is no purpose directly like that, then are people even going to reply to what I am reaching out to them for. I think the bigger issue is who do I even reach out to? Um, a lot of times there are big concerns over um, are people even going to respond to my um, cold calling slash um, cold emailing. I think unless you have a vast network to begin with, if you don't have a brand name school and your resume or your email chain slash account name is not harvard.edu, it's hard to get people to respond to what you're saying. I'm a big proponent that LinkedIn cold messaging probably doesn't work. Um, but even then, I think it is quite hard to find networking opportunities unless either the school makes for them, um, you have personal or family connections, um, or both. Um, and I think they typically align. Um, so it's really hard to navigate yourself into networking if you're kind of at a blind loss slash you have no connections to begin with. Um, but I think there are different things that you could follow to become a better networker. Um, I don't think I'll be providing any ways to break into that network, but more so how do you carry on the networking once you've made it through and you're on that phone call with that very important person who's been working for 10, 20 years and it's your first time talking to a real adult and you're like, damn, what do I talk about besides saying, I want your job? Um, how do I go about this without making it seem obvious what I want when you and I both know what we want from this call? Um, Nasty says, what about cold emailing? So I think cold LinkedIn, sometimes, most of the time, doesn't work. Um, I've never done it personally, um, but I know that people do it. Um, I will shamefully slash apologetically admit that I get a lot of cold LinkedIn messages every day and I don't respond to any of them. Um, just because if I respond to one of them, I feel like I have an obligation to respond to all of them. I mean, a lot of them are generic. It's just saying, hey, I'm blank, um, which I can tell by your LinkedIn account. So it's not really saying much, but they say, hi, I'm this person. I found you from YouTube or I found you from blank and I want to talk to you about this. Um, in order to get someone to talk to you, there needs to be an incentive. There needs to be a aligned incentive for them to reach back out to you, whether it be you guys have similar backgrounds, there's something to be connected by, something that you can give them, which is typically not available because if you're reaching out to network, they're probably at a higher position than you or of a, a position that can provide you advice as opposed to um, you providing them something in return. Um, and I think the best way to establish that is probably if you went to the same school or if you come from the same company, there's something that alerts them and says, oh, this person is kind of already part of my network and they want to take advantage of that. And this person has been vouched by the fact that they've gone to my school or have worked for a similar firm. Um, unless you have those things, I think it's hard to establish those things, which is why I prefer slash um, recommend cold emailing versus cold LinkedIn, just because I think email is one more official. LinkedIn is at the end of the day, still a social media platform. And two, if you have email, then probably there is some level of professional connection that you can establish through having that email handle. 
um, or just emailing as a whole, I think just feels more professional and cold emailing, I think works far more efficiently than LinkedIn. People definitely check email more than LinkedIn, I, I hope, um, especially if you can reach their personal email or even their work email. I think repeatedly doing it quite uh, kind of could be annoying, but I think my hit rate has been fairly high for um, email, cold emailing. I will say a lot of people that I reach out to have um, come from previous jobs that I had or um, come from my similar school background. So there's an easier connection that that is established. And I think my school has a pretty strong alumni base, which I think are highly encouraged to accept cold calls slash cold emails. Um, and I am the same. I, I typically pick up slash uh, respond when they are from my uh, alma mater. But I think obviously there are difficulties if you don't have that connection to begin with, but I would still recommend cold emailing above all else. Um, Jameson, I'll ask, is it true that LA has superficial and fake people? How hard is it to network there? Um, I think Southern California, California as a whole definitely has some kind of a reputation of being superficial or fake, um, whether it be physically um, or, or quite literally. And I think there is definitely a culture maybe permitted by Hollywood or this new TikTok generation, whatever it might be. I think there is a definite um, reputation that California has of being fake. I will say on a networking perspective, while I've never lived professionally in California, aside from um, sparse time periods here and there during COVID, and now I'm about to enter that sphere in early August, I think that networking could be deemed fake anywhere. Um, networking in itself is a relative fake practice where all parties involved know exactly that there is a underlying motivation and you're trying to hide that as best as you can by trying to convey that you're genuinely interested in what the other person is talking about, which I think I would advise um, for in the sense that I think when you are on a networking call, you are definitely gaining things from that call that you wouldn't have otherwise. Obviously, the underlying meaning is I want this job and this is going to get me to have that job better and maybe get my foot in the door. And that's what I've used networking for. That's what a lot of people use networking for. Um, but I will say that there are things, nuances that you pick up on calls that you wouldn't on platforms like online or YouTube even, um, that you just can get a better sense of while picking their brain. I hate using that phrase, but um, there are just things that only people that are currently in this industry or previously in the industry understand and know um, that you might, while being in the spot, think it's an obvious thing. But even I, as a professional, know things about the industries that I've been part of um, that to me seem very obvious, but I think people find very insightful because it's just not available anywhere. Um, and that speaks a lot to, I think, issues in our education system and just the inability of our school systems to teach people what um, careers are available and what careers mean and what they actually do. I think that's a problem that we need to continuously battle together somehow. And hopefully that my channel and my Consulting platform um, serve somewhat of a solution to that bigger problem, but I think networking is your first step, aside from school, to get a better sense of different careers and um, uh, career progressions that are out there. Um, how can you network as a high schooler? I, I've never networked as a high schooler. I don't know if networking as a, as a high schooler is recommended. I, I typically side with the um, area of thought that during high school you should enjoy life um, and you shouldn't worry too much about careers, but I do think that it is important to think about careers and understand the different sphere of careers so that you don't ruin slash waste your time during college or post-college doing things that you don't want, which I think millions of Americans have finally realized over the course of the past year, um, looking at stats like, you know, 40 plus percent of people want to leave their job even without a backup plan. I kind of made that statistic up on the spot, but I think I read something similar. Um, and I think everyone is realizing like, why am I doing the thing that I'm doing? And perhaps if you if you network or, or do career exploration a little bit earlier during high school um, and you understand what you want to do or at least narrow down and ax out things you don't want to do early on, it allows you to focus on things that perhaps you actually want to do and um, invest your time and skill that way. Um, just because I think doing things earlier always helps. Um, that's something that I always regret, even I am even as I am still somewhat young. Um, I think there are regrets that I have over things that I really want to pursue now. For example, if I want to uh, pursue stand-up comedy or open a restaurant or become a chef, um, little uh, dreams of mine that I actually have as opposed to being a desk job person, it would have been faster if I took those opportunities while I had my control over my own time when money was not a concern and I had all the time in the world. Uh, but that is no longer the case as I've become a professional. Um, and I think perhaps 
maybe not networking in the traditional sense of spraying emails because I don't think any 30, 40 year old is going to take you seriously when you say you're 15 at blank high school looking to do career exploration. Maybe they will if they're a kindness of heart. Um, but I think exploring jobs when you're young is definitely recommended um, just out of my own uh, experience slash regret. Lee ji says, Hyung Tarzan goes to Um For those of you not fluent in Korean, he said, bro, you are good looking. Um, I appreciate that. Is it weird to bring up something in common that you found on their LinkedIn? No, I think I think in any networking capacity since slash opportunity, the best thing to do is find some level of relatability. And if the only thing you can do is find something on their LinkedIn that you can relate to, and that's the way that you found them, or that's the way reason why you resort resorted to contact them instead of someone else, you should do whatever it takes to establish that connection. There is something weird about human relatability that makes us more attuned to replying to people, connecting with people just based on connections that we already have, which is why I think um, race-based connections happen because the underlying assumption is that um, there is something subconscious about the fact that you and I look the same um, and have therefore had a subconscious level of similar experiences. And I think that allows you to connect better with people that um, you look like um, as a very baseline example. Um, Sign a junior year offer, have a ton of time Want to keep networking as it I always find it enjoyable. Only issue is I don't know what to aim at networking, a goal of some sort. Gene, you know, I don't know if you really need a goal. If you really like networking for itself, then net, like networking for itself is the goal, right? Um, I would just talk to as many people as possible with the uh, junior year offer in mind, then you feel secure and it allows you to really network with people that you actually want to network with. As an incoming freshman, is it better to reach out a, to a student from your school or, or working professional already? I think you would start with people from your school because that's the connection that you already have um, as opposed to the working professionals, which are a little bit detached from where you are in life and then build from there and see where their heads are at, what careers they're pursuing, what's realistic at your school. Um, I think it's always important to relate slash connect with people that are in similar shoes before jumping to those that may be at a different stage in life. Going to start full-time at KPMG later this month. Tips on making good impression virtually. Um, I have a video on this, David, not to be um, a mean guy, but I think that um, we'll answer it better. Uh, I think it's titled uh, Doing Well During COVID or something like that that talks about being over communicators and things like that. I don't know KPMG specifically, but I would argue that it all applies the same. Thoughts on the job as a relationship banker to get food into the door at finance. Um, James, I'm sorry. I don't know what a relationship banker is. RJK, hi, Brian. I'm going to cold reach out to 20 alumni folk right now. Wish me luck. Best of luck. Um, the thing that I always recommend um, in all my career consulting calls, um, which you guys can sign up in the link below, um, is just keep a tracker of the people that you network with and do like two calls a day. Um, I think anyone can spare an hour a day. Um, and if that expands your network, why not? Um, I think people fail to recognize that at the end of the day, work is people um, and people's work. Um, and it's not necessarily always about the skill sets that you have. Most jobs in life, I think, are uh, approachable and it's, it's, it's penetratable through knowing someone inside. Uh, I think the number of cases that I've seen that have infiltrated a role based on someone they know far outseeds people that just directly apply. And that's just, I think, a reality of life. People are applying to these roles by the thousands. How are you going to decipher who to pick out of them? It's the people that you know slash you want to refer. Um, I think you might think of that as unfair, but if anything, that presents you a solution. That's how you should approach it as well. Um, and I think that's just one of the many ways of getting a job, but also a relatively low barrier to entry of getting a job because what it takes is for you to show initiative that you want the job by talking to people already in the job. Um, tips on constructing a successful cold email. Um, I usually kept mine short. Um, I quickly introduced myself, established a connection to them, and then talked about why I wanted their time and then gave them some times that I was available. Uh, people are busy and they like short and quick. Have you ever thought about pursuing the STEM or medical route? Um, I was kind of pre-med freshman year. Um, did relatively well in bio and chem, but realized long-term that wasn't for me. There were people that were far better than me at it, um, far more persistent, far, far more persevering. I just never liked science growing up. Just thought it wasn't for me. Your thoughts on Grant Cardone. Aaron Yeager, sorry, I don't know who that is. Um, what's your GPA and SAT score? Uh, my GPA in college was 3.8. I never took the SAT. My ACT was a 35. Um, when do you think you will buy a place to live? Probably within the next year or two. Um, I am going back to Southern California in August and then going to start looking for places. Do you think it's possible to go straight into PE from undergrad? Um, I've seen that before, but IB is the best bet. Yes. Dan, hi, Brian. 
I'm going to get to university. I want to participate in case competitions about stock pitching. Is there any way to catch up? Any resources? I've never done uh, stock pitching, Dan. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think I can offer you much help there. But I would assume there's a lot of public resources available if you just Google how to do a perfect, uh, good stock pitch. Is finding a group like race, ethnicity, and IB valuable? So at least there's similarity somewhat there. I mean, I think you, it, you tend to gravitate towards people that you're like, and they tend to like you because they're similar to you. Uh, most of the cases that I've, I've heard in terms of group placement is more based on what school you've been to um, rather than race and ethnicity. But um, I mean, it's always easier to relate to people that you are similar to, right? Um, hey, Brian, not really to cold calling, but can I book you for events? <laughs> Ishan, I'd be happy to be booked for events. I don't know what I would be booked for. Um, I think I can do some level of career talking, maybe just speaking out of my butt and entertaining people for 30 minutes and maybe doing a little stand-up gig, but I'm uh, happy to um, book you for an event. I don't know what event I'll be booked for. Um, I can do like um, MC. I can I can, I can can narrate slash be the host of the event. I'm very good at that. I'm trying to get started with Excel and getting better. A level is good for banking to not be amazing, but at least make your life easier and be a valuable worker. A lot of Excel skills you learn on the job and senior analysts and associates teach you tricks, tricks and tips. Um, I don't think I went in as like an insane Exceler, but just based, if you can go through school, I think you're fine. Do you have a good chance to break into PE with consulting rather than IB? Um, no, I would say most people that break into PE are from IB. Um, get involved in the CFA research challenge at your school. I don't know who's that too, but Pedro, thanks for the tip. Thoughts on CFA? Um, I, I, I've heard mixed things. Um, I, I don't see every senior banker with a CFA, but I also know that if you're interested in being in finance in the long run, that it's something that you should consider. I also know that it's relatively hard and you should prep a lot for it. Brian, do you see Corp does a path to PE? What about Corp lending? So to PE, um, I think the best way to get into PE is through investment banking. That's typically what most PE role jobs ask for, sometimes consulting. Um, I don't know if Corp Dev and Corp lending are great ways to get into PE. I've just never heard of personal cases that way. Um, what do you think you'll buy? A house or a condo? Uh, hopefully a house. Target price, um, if I can afford the 20% down. I'm looking probably in the maybe like the 500 to 700,000 range. Are you currently still in a startup? Yes, I am, Justin Lee. Do you experience any discrimination in the workplace as an Asian American? Joseph Wang, um, I do not. Do you have a computer setup that you recommend? Um, I just kind of do whatever. I'm not really good with technology. I have this mouse, which is a Magic Eagle, I don't know, gaming looking mouse. I have an HB keyboard standard. And then I recently sold my dual monitors, which are both HP uh, 23 inch monitors. So I'm use I am working with one laptop at home. Uh, props for that. I should get an award for that. Um, best exit options. Not trying to kill myself in IB. Um, exit options from IB. Uh, there's PE, there's venture capital, there's hedge fund, there's startup, there's corp dev. Lions and bears and tigers. Oh my. Starting IB full-time position soon. Was wondering how you think I could start now working at PE. Um, Jonathan, not to be a mean person, but focus on your IB role um, and think about PE later. Uh, maybe you should I think I'm a big proponent of you should focus on the thing that you're doing right now and then build. If you haven't even started the full-time position yet, um, you shouldn't jump to networking. Um, hey, Brian, what are your thoughts on investor relations business development? Um, IR, I heard, feels more like a back office marketing role and it's pretty, uh, you get pretty stuck when you're in it, um, but to each their own. I think it's obviously a lot more loose. You could still say you're working on a finance role. You get paid pretty decently, but it's a pretty like marketing, you get stuck in the role kind of role. ThinkPad. I had ThinkPad before, and then I changed to a Mac. Um, what was your coping mechanism in finance careers? DJ, maybe. Um, I didn't DJ. I don't know how to DJ. Um, I like playing music, but I don't know how to like professionally DJ. My coping mechanism was uh, yelling into a uh, pillow. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, my coping mechanism was probably YouTube and speaking to people and telling people how much I was stressed out. I'm moving to a new city, have no connections. How would you recommend going about building a network? Ah, great question. So this is more about like social network, I think. Um, uh, there's apps like Nextdoor, uh, which hits you up with or, or connects you to literally local people. Um, I think there's a lot of like groups you can join on social platforms like that. Maybe join a sports league of sorts, like pick up basketball or kickball that allows you to meet more people. Um, there's a lot of LinkedIn groups, I think, that are local based. Um, there's a lot of ways to find yourself connected online. Maybe there's an alumni group, alumnus group um, for your school in that area. I think already established connections are a great way to establish more connections. Things you can relate to like sports and activities also a great way to find new people. I'm also worried about that as I move back to Southern California and have to restate everything. UVA, William & Mary. Uh, for banking, probably UVA. 
Brian Rising Jr., top 30. I've just started networking for IB. Um, Nolan, great question. I'm actually releasing a video this Saturday about am I too late for investment banking? Uh, the thumbnail literally says stop asking this question uh, because the video covers different stages of life that I think either you're too late or you're not. Um, if you're a rising junior, you're not at late. If I went to non-target, is going for MSF at top five? Um, I don't know much about MSFs. The one friend that I do know from MSF could not break into banking. So take that for what it's worth. What was your health and diet hold during IB? Uh, my health and diet was not bad, but not great. Um, I ate late a lot. Um, I delivered food almost every day. I ate out every day. I didn't cook a single meal. Um, I never ate breakfast to begin with, so that didn't really change. But lunch and dinner, I ate out. Dinner, I ate really late. I try to work out once a day, but obviously that was schedule permitting, which is not always, if not most of the time. So I got fat. Sick Beats is a prereq from the CEO of GS, correct? You got to always have the sick beats. What's your tip of advice for a rising sophomore who's interested in pursuing his career in IB? Um, do as much as networking as you can. Make sure you explore investment banking through talking to people. Make sure that's something you actually want to do um, instead of something that your mom or other people on YouTube tell you that is the best career ever. Advice on improving how well-spoken you are. Practice, practice, practice. Um, go on Clubhouse. I want Clubhouse to come back. One of my campaigns for this next quarter, I think, is to make Clubhouse real again. I miss that platform so much. I think I enjoy it far more than YouTube Live because I want people to talk to me. Um, reading off a chat is very limiting. I want you guys to like verbally talk to me. And I miss that about Clubhouse. I wish Clubhouse was back, but I know Clubhouse is dead now, which really upsets me. When I was first there, Clubhouse was like an app that was built for me. I felt like I was alive. I've never been happier. But now I'm stuck with this YouTube Live gig. What do you think about a business analyst career? Um, depends on the firm, depends on the company, depends on the track. But I, I think a lot of people go up there. Um, working for a real company, working towards building something is a lot more fun than advisory roles, right? What is Corp's strategy like? I don't know. Um, actuarial background, I think, is strong. Why don't you become an actuary if you have an actuarial background? Did you know any quants? I do know any quants. Um, are they happy? I know quants that are happy. I know quants that are not happy. Uh, but they make a lot of money. Hey, Brian, how long can I contact you to book? How could I owe? Um, you uh, I have a, a, a business email on my on my channel. I think it's chat chat with Brad. Actually, let me check right now. Um, it's it's Ishan, It's chat with Brian John at gmail.com. Um, if you want to book me, um, chat with Brian John at Brian John or chat with Jesus. Chat with Brian John at gmail.com. Thoughts on mortgage banking? I know nothing about mortgage banking, Karan. Good night. Thanks for the stream, Brian. Good night, Justin. I will be studying economics in undergrad. Would I be disadvantaged on entering IB compared to finance undergrads? No, I know plenty of economics grads. And if anything, I think if you're a finance grad, there's a higher bar because they want you to know all these finance things. Um, yeah, I, I've never seen econ be a setback um, for recruiting. Um, if anything, I've, I've seen plenty of econ grads do very, very well um, in banking roles. And I don't think you have to be a finance uh, major. For reference, I was not a finance major. I was an accounting and business major. Current M&A banker in Chicago. Thoughts on equity debt capital markets as an exit from M&A for a more sustainable long-term career. Um, I don't know anyone that's exited to ECM, DCM from M&A, um, but I've heard it's chiller for sure. Yeah, Wesley, by all means, I think you should pursue it if that's something you're interested in. But finance at the end of the day is finance, right? How many times did you network each month during college? Um, I think at the peak, I was networking every day um, during college. It wasn't like a monthly thing. I think while I was trying to break into banking, it was an everyday exercise. What's your advice on going to start up ZC straight out of college compared to consulting or IB? Um, I would shy against it. There's probably not much you can do with zero experience. Startup uh, and VC, they expect you to run things on your own and uh, work professionally on your own. Um, I think it's quite overwhelming for someone that's not had any professional experience. It's very important for you to um, have some experience before jumping in because there's not much you can offer as a college grad, if I'm being honest. We ever do the CPA? No, I will not. I am not interested in accounting. Thanks, man. I'll hit you up at chat with Brian. It's chat with Brian Jun at gmail.com. Uh, Ishan. It's in my uh, YouTube bio. It's my last name's in it as well. Chat with Brian Jun at gmail.com. Nesty says, Will you be watching? Well, what will I be watching, Nesty? Um, back to what I was saying, though. I wish Clubhouse was back. I miss Clubhouse. I don't know if you guys are on Clubhouse, but Clubhouse was the goat. Maybe I'll go back tonight just for fun because I know it's dead, but maybe I'll take a sneak peek because it's what I actually want to do. That's on big four exit opportunities to IB. Um, yeah, I have a video on that, Jay. Yeah, you should watch it. Um, 
by big four, I, I'm assuming you're, re, you're, you're talking about uh, accounting. Yeah, Discord, same thing. Oh yeah, I heard about Discord. Uh, maybe I should do Discord. So that, that allows me to create a, a server of sorts with everyone that's interested and then we can talk uh, verbally. I just like how simple Clubhouse is. Discord is too complicated for me. Will you be watching Italy versus England? I have not been following uh, the soccer games. I know that there was a disappointment with, with Spain or something recently. Um, sorry, guys. I don't like watching sports. Your audio quality is great. What microphone are you using? Funny that you ask. Optimal Production 2. I am using the built-in Apple MacBook Pro microphone because my microphone is not working, ironically. Your hair looks so good. Aru, thanks. I don't do anything. There's no product. This is just me out of the shower. Clubhouse made me alive. Haha, <laughs> mood. Yeah, Clubhouse is the best thing ever. I think it's the only, like, the two weeks in February, the week after uh, Elon was promoting it, and then just boom, like, oh, I spent 50 hours in a week. It was the greatest thing ever. Um, I, I really wish Clubhouse was back. I think that app was literally built for me. What did you usually talk about with people you network with? This is a great question. Conversation with networking seems artificial. It is artificial by definition. The whole purpose is for artificial purposes. Uh, but I, I think when I entered into a networking call, I was actually genuinely interested in what they had to say slash what they did for a living. That's why I had the call. I never did a call just to check off a box. I actually asked questions that were like very straight up, like, what do you look forward to in the day when you work? Why do you do the things you do? Uh, would you say that you're fairly compensated? Like I asked very direct questions that I wanted to check off and make sure that this was the role that I was getting myself into. I think that genuineness will come across well. Discord is easy if you're interested. I can help you out. You probably bring in a lot of people. Um, yeah, I, I'm in a fair number of discords for other purposes, but just the whole chat server thing, and I'm sure it's it's a it's a beauty, but I like Clubhouse just because you can join different calls as a feed and there's different people and people are alerted that you're in a call. You don't feel obligated to a group like you do in Discord, whereas I think Clubhouse is more spontaneous. The app was meant for me. Advice for living in expensive cities, extended host stay hotels or apartments. Uh, definitely in apartments. I don't know why you would stay in hotels. Um, is that a cheaper option? I just never, I don't know about that personally. How did you get your current job, LinkedIn or through network? Someone reach out to me directly. Why do you think Clubhouse is failing? You seem to be a diehard fan. Um, I mean, I called this from the beginning. I have a video literally two weeks after the hype saying, "Never, uh, I, I lie, Clubhouse sucks or something like that. Um, it requires immense user input. The reason why things like Instagram, Twitter, um, and YouTube work is because you can silently participate. You could watch um, while on the bus, you can do it while your headphones are in. You can do it like you guys while you're just chatting and seeing this one person perform slash talk. Whereas Clubhouse, yes, you can be a listener, but it requires people to actively, lively participate. And there is also a struggle with an ad revenue model. I know that they're doing direct donations now, but there are a fair number of things that I think make it hard. Um, and also in this eight day and age of everyone wants to be a celebrity and everyone thinks they're important, it's hard to sustain slash listen in a conversation when you feel like you can do a better job than them. And then you feel like, damn, I'm not going to stay in this anymore because the people that are talking are dumber than me and I want to be the person at the top, but they're not letting me in because they're insecure about their position at the top. It, the human psyche doesn't last very long. The reason why I boomed in the two weeks that I was part of it is because people were tired of COVID and it happened to be a pandemic stricken uh, boost, but I, I long-term it's not sustainable. Have you been tempted to try one of the make money online business models? Um, I have never been tempted to do that. I, I've never, fun fact, I've never clicked on a digital ad in my life. Um, that's something that I take pride in. I don't understand why people click on those things. Guys, if someone can make a million dollars a year drop shipping or whatever, they probably won't be wasting their time advertising on YouTube and telling everyone. If that's something that everyone can do, then everyone should be doing it. I have the habit of saying slash now after watching you for a while. Do I say slash a lot? That's funny. David McGrath. Hey, Brian, unrelated video topic, but I'm entering in Chicago. I'm curious if you got restaurant recommendations. Great question, David. I would check out Duck Duck Goat. I would check out uh, Maple and Ash. I would check out uh, Monte Verde. I would check out um, what else is good that I've been to. I would check out. Um, um, well, of course, I'm blanking now that I'm asked for a restaurant. Anything in West Loop, High Five Ramen, Green Street Meats. Um, Huge fans of everything I just mentioned. Uh, loyalist, best cheeseburger in Chicago. Um, thanks for getting into sales and training in a big bank if you know of any. Um, yeah, I, I, I struggled slash debated between sales and training and investment banking while a junior year. Um, it, that's also very networking based, especially on the sales side. Hey, Brian, I'm watching you from Brazil. Ooh, boa noite. Um, or maybe it's bom dia for you now. 
Uh, cheers to your videos. By the way, uh, should I send the cold calling email? What should I send in the cold calling email? Um, brief one-time summary of yourself, why you're emailing, how you relate to them, and then asking for their time. Did you have to take on any student loans? Ooh, is that private information? Uh, skip. I don't believe that you must have misclicked a few times minimum. I have never misclicked. Um, I've seen listing for hotels at $800 a month. Um, really? I mean, if $800 a month at an expensive city, of course. Why would you not do that? I mean, I guess it's kind of uncomfortable because you can't buy your own furniture and stuff, but $800 a month, hell yeah. Sons or bucks? Um, boo. Sons. Is Chris Paul in the Sons? Call anxiety? Who would I call anxiety? Boa Neoich. Good night. It's just two hours difference between... No, I know Boa Neoich is a good night. I, I was asking, is it is it Boa Neoich or Boa Neoich? Um, I'm so dumb. Brazil obviously is lateral with North America. Yes, you're um, pretty similar time zone. Sorry. Um, even though liberal arts schools are smaller, most probably don't have business finance programs. Uh, my, my school did. Do you think the networking potential is stronger? I think so because the alumni base is smaller and they're more inclined to um, accept your cool calling calls. Mergers and Inquisitions has cold email you know, examples of anyone who needs them. Yeah, Evan is a great resource, I think, and it's free. And I think the guy's name is Brian too. Did you find your work in IB to be fulfilling? I did not. That's why I left. Do IB analysts um, have the power to refer candidates for interviews? Um, they do. Who should I prioritize networking with? You should begin at the analyst level and then work your way up. But analysts are more, most inclined slash um, somewhat incentivized to reply to you. And I don't think an MD is going to reply to someone that they've never heard of. They're busy. Haha, <laughs> skip. Thoughts on the breaking into Wall Street courses. Is it expensive? Um, I have never spent money on a course like that. And I always recommend not spending money on a course like that. There's plenty of free resources. Why, why purchase something that's just going to tell an accumulation of everything that is being discussed online. That's my personal opinion. Um, I think online courses allow you to skip the effort of putting in effort. Um, but if you have time, then I think you should just find the stuff on your own. Try Aventus. Sure. I don't know what that is. Those things are thousands of dollars. Yeah, I know. I, I've, I've, I've had people ask me, like, should I buy this $6,000 course on breaking into Wall Street? No. <laughs> I don't know what they offer besides what mergers and acquisitions and certain helpful posts on Wall Street Oasis and free YouTube channels offer. Only $200. I mean, if you feel inclined, if it's $200, sure, if you have $200 lying around, but I still think there's free resources that are far better than paid resources. At least that's my thought. For those of you who are joining, I didn't realize the number jumped to 50. Um, yes, we are centered around networking and cold calling this this very evening, but today's topics have ranged all the way from should I live in a hotel or a house to let's bring Clubhouse back. Um, what is thoughts on commission only jobs with high income potential? Um, great thoughts. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say there. Uh, I think a lot of people have them. Uh, there's a lot of stress because commission is hard to hit. A lot of them are relationship based. So the people at the top, the older folks are not going to move out of the way, um, but they have very high potential like tech sales. Good money. What is your strategy for introverts in terms of networking? I think it doesn't have anything to do with it. introverts, extroverts. Um, that also all has to do with literally being around people. I think if anything, introverts have the ability to be more introspective and think about what does this person really want from me slash what do I really need to get out of this person? Is cold calling anxiety inducing or does it get better with practice? Definitely gets better with practice. And I think as long as you let go of the fact that you need to please this person and it's all about you just on a phone call, a conversation with any other person and that person is going to tell you what you want to know. And by the time that that person has signed up slash scheduled a call with you, it means they want to talk to you, which I think already by that point, it means you have bought their time and you shouldn't feel ashamed slash nervous because that time is yours now. So fully embrace it and don't be scared. Do you know anyone that is an insurance agent that you could speak on and give an opinion on? I don't. I don't know any insurance agents. I'm sorry. Last movie you watched. Um, the Departed by Martin Scorsese. Did you feel like recruiting from banking made college busy to the point where you didn't have much free time in college? I, no, not at all. Um, I recruited only intensely um, from end of sophomore year to beginning of junior year. And then I spent the next two years literally doing whatever I wanted because I was set. Also, Patrick Starr from SpongeBob has his own show. Oh, does he now? I love SpongeBob. I learned English through SpongeBob. Cold email from LinkedIn profile email, find their work email or LinkedIn message, work email, always. 
is this networking? Like, are we networking right now? Um, are you guys networking with me? I guess in a way you guys are on a virtual call with me and somewhat getting insight. I don't know if I'm providing that insight because if I'm being frank, I do these Wednesday live streams because it gives me something to look forward to. And I miss clubhouse. Like this is my way of coping with clubhouse not existing. Um, and I think I can get a bigger audience here than I can get on clubhouse because literally no one's on clubhouse anymore. Fantastic answer. I feel much more confident now. Thank you as always. Happy to help. Petroleum Crypt. Sorry if I'm a bit off topic. Do you have any reviews about in-house counsel at a hedge fund? Um, yeah, in-house law is fantastic. I heard in-house law at anything is great, as long as you don't join one full of lawsuits. But you're making good money. It's stable. You're signing a bunch of forms, but that's about it. You're basically getting paid because of your degree, as opposed to actual hardcore work like big law. Um, I see a lot of people that jump to in-house counsel after a couple of years of big law. Um, I recommend it if you have a law degree. Have you ever thought about starting your own business? I think about it all the time, Julian, and I am actively working towards building my own thing, um, always. Side hustling, as we all should, as we are always behind if we don't. What's your follow-up opinion after no response to the first email and it was open via email tracker? Wow, you have an email tracker? That's kind of scary. Um, why not follow up? What is there to lose? Worst case scenario, they don't respond. Best case scenario, they do respond. I appreciate your insight. Thanks very much. I'm always happy to help. Have you ever thought of pursuing law? I have. Um, I like reading. I like writing. Um, I like law. I like policy. I like politics, which all fall somewhat under the realm of law. Am I intimidated by the idea of going into school for three more years? Yes. Am I intimidated by dropping 300 more grand? Yes. But it is definitely an option, always. If you, the 50 of us need to collectively bring Clubhouse back. I like that. If all 50 of us jumped on Clubhouse right now, we would revive it. Um, let me re-download Clubhouse right now and see how many people are even online um, to see if it's even a viable option. Maybe I'll bring it back. Maybe I'll be the revival of Clubhouse and then Clubhouse will hire me as a brand ambassador. Social networking, 581,000 reviews. I haven't been on it in a while. Podcast updates, who will be the first Who will the first guest be? Um, yeah, so me and a friend are actively working on a podcast together. Um, it will start as soon as I go back to Southern California, which is next month. Uh, first guest will just be ourselves, and then we will go from there. Um, have you ever dealt with the desire for prestige? Always, always. Um, human beings are all about prestige, right? Um, but I think I've somewhat dropped it. Wow, I've not been... Um, on Clubhouse for so long. And I'm looking at it now. I have 600 followers. Wow. Everyone get back on Clubhouse. I'm going to bring Clubhouse great again. Oh, and people are all, people are on. Oh my gosh. There's so many people that are on. Um, 22 hours ago, eight hours ago. Some names that I recommend. Some names that I recognize. Uh, people that have been here for so long. So sad. All the people that I, I thought would still be here are on there. That's sad. Um, let's move this to Clubhouse. I wish. I mean, if we move it to Clubhouse, it'd be a lot more fun just because I think people can be more interactive and, and speak to me as opposed to doing it on chat and have a tone to their voice. Is it possible to lay an IB as a software? Yeah, people do that all the time. So many banks are hiring, um, starting kindergarten now. Favorite question someone networking with you has asked you. Ooh, someone has asked me about my YouTube channel, which I kind of actually don't like because it was a professional call and it became kind of unprofessional. I do, I do like questions that are like, what do you look forward to in a day? Uh, something less, less about banking, but more still pertaining to careers. When and how should you ask for a coffee shed? Um, whenever. Um, and you should ask it when you feel the time is right. Um, and you should do it over email. How do you answer why this specific industry group? I've never been asked that question because we did a six-month generals program. And then we like rushed as a full-time person into a group. So it was never like an interview setting. Um, what do you do when you feel like you're behind in life? I always feel like I'm behind in the life. Uh, we always have this perpetual feeling in this generation. Everyone that's watching, I'm assuming is under the age of 30, but if you're not, even better. Uh, this generation is all about you're behind. Um, we always see other people getting ahead and doing so many things all at the same time. Um, I, I made a video literally called Hustle Culture is Toxic because we're always pursuing this ideal and trying to meet demands and expectations of others or projections of what other people expect out of us and trying to chase that constantly. And it's awful. It feels like crap. I feel that pressure all the time. I pressure, I feel the pressure right now. Um, part of the reasons why I do any of this stuff is probably because of that pressure. Um, and I get scared because I think we have this innate belief when we're kids slash 
slightly young adults that there will be a turn off switch when we become real adults, um, that we won't feel this anymore. We won't feel the bad habits. We won't do, be feeling this crappy innate desire. But reality is, unless you change it for yourself, you're going to have these habits forever. Um, and you can tell because the habits when you were young that you didn't actively turn off, probably you still have right now as a young 20 something year old. Um, and I'm scared that I'm going to continue this path of feeling like I'm always behind. I'm always not doing the right thing. And there's always something to be better to be done because there's so many options now. You see these options, you see people that are being so ahead and doing the things that you do in a better light at a better level when you they're far younger than you. And I think that's something that I'm constantly scared of, constantly thinking about and constantly struggling with. When would you start a LinkedIn? I started like sophomore year of college, maybe freshman year of college. Are funny or crazy stories from my experience? Um, I have so many. Maybe I'll make a video called Funny Stories from Investment Banking. Um, I'll do that. What is your plan for an MBA? Not decided right now. Most depressing, depressing action is going on LinkedIn and looking at Wharton alumni. Yeah, and seeing the exact same path for all of them. Um, cold call stories, funny, bad, good, slightly sexy. Um, I don't really have interest in, in exciting cold call stories. It's, it's mainly just like me asking for advice or people asking me for advice. Nothing funny, nothing sexy. Should freshmen schedule coffee chats with upperclassmen for career advice? Yeah, I wouldn't call them coffee chats. I would just call them hanging out on campus. Howdy from Australia. Hello. Do you have any personal mental models to suggest? I don't know what mental models are, Quang, um, if you want to specify. Thanks for the answer. It really resonated with me. I hope so. Some companies like Blackstone are hiring interns basically two years in advance at this point. How do you cope out that? I don't know how companies can tell whether or not a 19-year-old is going to be a good employer or not. How do you even know that they're going to be wanting to do finance when they're of age? Um, just this weird toxic mentality of like, we need to figure out ourselves now. A mentor of mine told me today, life is not a race. No one cares about you as much as you do, um, which are two very hard things to accept in this generation. Do you have cousins who are investment bankers? I do not. So I don't know what it's like to talk to them, but I have a lot of friends that are closer to me than some of my cousins that are investment bankers. It's always interesting because a lot of them just complain about life um, and they ask about the other side. Howdy from Mars. Um, how's Mars? Did you follow Elon there? Um, but yes, everybody, I would really like Clubhouse to come back, but I went back on Clubhouse just now to see who's online. Not very promising. Um, I don't think I will um, go back there, if I'm being frank. Um, for those of you joining now, I am talking about networking and cold calling, which is what most of this conversation has been steered towards. We've covered everything from now student loans to me getting back on Clubhouse, uh, but happy to answer any questions. Do you have a video on work-life balance? Uh, I talk about it briefly on all my things. I talk about stress management. I will make a video on work-life balance. I can't believe I've never made a video on work-life balance. Great, great recommendation, Jameson. I will do that. What is your impression on people who join IB after watching movies? Does that mean people who join IB because of watching movies or my experience joining IB after me watching movies? Could we invite DJ Sully to the clubhouse? Who is DJ Sully? Students have very limited experience. How did you manage to perform well as a summer intern and secure full-time? I mean, most firms hire summer analysts with the idea that they want them full-time. And I think most banks, it's just so, like most firms, they hire people because everyone else is hiring early with the understanding that the people that they're hiring don't really know what they're doing. And they're hiring solely because they want to hire early. And it's not because they're experienced. It's not because they're skilled. It's because everyone else is hiring early, so they must be hiring early. And it's to retain talent early. It's a really weird prisoner's dilemma. How did you find your first mentor? Um, I don't think I like actively secured a mentor or looked out for mentors. I just saw a lot of people around me and they became my mentors. I don't even know if some of them know that they're my mentor. I just call them my mentor. Uh, how much personality are you allowed to show during coffee chats? Fanny, be yourself. Um, you should definitely approach the relationship. Maybe not like a friend, but like you guys are equal. All human beings are equal. Off topic, but meant to ask, how does doing IB and going to school simultaneously work? Heard some PBs pay for an MBA. I don't think they pay for a part-time MBA, do they? I don't know. I've never seen people do part-time MBA as a, as a banker. You should do it like as a vacation. You don't have extra time. Like kids who went to IB after watching Wolf of the Street, which don't really make sense. Are there people like that? Like they go just because of Wolf of Wall Street? Um, I mean, if they made it to IB, they must have put in the effort. I don't think they just watched the movie and got it. 
DJ Solid, David Solomon, who's a DJ out of the office. Oh, sorry, I don't watch The Office, Chris. I know that's a sin on the social media world, but I don't. It's just something I do not do. Um, wow, now that I mention it, I really want Clubhouse to come back, but I know for a fact that it's dead, and that's so sad that there's a social media out there that is limited, literally limited by their participation slash effort. Accounts equity. Hey, hello. Did you spend a lot of your money on materialistic things when you first got your job? Um, yes and no. Um, there were a couple of weekends that I was like, let's just blow money. And I went to like New York and spent like a grand. Um, but outside of that, I never bought like expensive things. I'm not really a materialistic person in the sense that like I didn't buy like a Rolex watch or anything like that. Um, is tech where you want to be long-term or still open to pivoting elsewhere? Um, that is a great question. Um, I think I want to be te in tech for the near future. Um, I would say that tech is a vast space. So I think pivoting is a difficult question because I could pivot from the tech sphere that I'm in right now, but tech is everywhere, right? Everyone says they're tech now. I would like to be in tech and, and, and ops and strategy and products for a while and grow my career here for the, for the near term. But ultimately I want to build my own thing, right? Um, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse was better. <laughs> M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. -E. Brian, who's the CEO of Goldman? I have no idea. But you certainly bought the Ferragamo loafers. I had did not. Were you close to any of the senior people in IB? I was. Um, a lot of my MDs were cool. Um, I was closest to to them as close uh, analysts could be. Is it common for analysts to become close to VP or MD? Yeah, especially at firms that I think have closer teams, smaller team dynamics. Um, in m a where you work heavily alongside VPs and MDs, it's very, very um, common, at least in my experience. Would a hedge fund for fund, hedge fund intern should be a good stepping stone for a Of course, anything with um, finance experience um, is a good stepping stone. I, I, I think these kind of questions are kind of funny. I, any experience is a good stepping stone, but of course, the hedge fund experience is great. You answered this earlier, but I think I wasn't here. What do you think about LinkedIn when you started using it? I think LinkedIn is kind of dumb. Um, I think it's more for showing off. Um, the job, I think Portal is great in terms of like aggregating and seeing what jobs are available. Um, it's good for showing off and making other people feel bad. Um, I think I want to make a video called reacting to cringy LinkedIn posts. Um, I just, I don't know the value of it. And I think it's, it, it had good intentions, but it's turned into this toxic place of people bragging about things that no one really cares about. Anyone to protect yourself if a coworker throws you under the bus for that VP position? Sheesh. Just tell them, tell everyone the truth. Like be the first to say the truth and tell everyone that this person is throwing me under the bus. How old were your MDs? Any, uh, the youngest MDs were like early thirties, late thirties. Oldest MDs were like 50 to sixties. Let's get a personal finance and budget breakdown video. Um, I've, I have a personal finance video. I won't, I don't have a budget. So it's hard to say I have a budget breakdown video, but I will talk about personal finance more as the channel evolves. Are you ever fearful that you won't be able to sustain yourself financially? Frankly, no. I think worst case scenario, I will be, I will be a great waiter. Um, and a lot of people don't want to work in service jobs anymore. So I think uh, worst case scenario, I could be the best, best waiter. I love being a waiter and I think I could do a great waiter and make a decent living for myself. Have you ever seen the show industry? I have not. I should get the tattooed on my forehead. It's probably the most frequently asked question on this channel. I have never watched the show industry and I don't want. Reacting to Courage LinkedIn post will be a quality video. Yeah, I, I plan on doing it. Maybe my next week video. Um, posts that are, I would like to thank. Yeah, I, like I, I, I don't want to be mean. I think there is merit and I think there's some kind of refreshing feeling of accomplishment by saying I like to thank my mom and my dad and 3,000 people for this accomplishment. But like, what is the underlying reason you're posting that? It is to say that you got the job. I don't know what that accomplishes. Like it's like almost an even worse part portion form of Instagram. LinkedIn cringe posts, the worst. How did you find free time at IB? Um, none. Uh, there, there definitely were free time. I mean, there's like nighttime, some weekends definitely free. Have you ever tried to learn another language? So I am a native Korean speaker. So I learned, I guess in a weird way, I tried to learn English and I think I somewhat succeeded. Um, you guys can be the best judge of that. Um, I learned Spanish in high school. 
Um, and then I kind of try to keep up with it. So I guess those three. And then I try to learn Portuguese when I studied abroad in Brazil. And I did mission trips there. I saw a post of someone who beat cancer. Why post that on LinkedIn? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's great to uh, post cancer or beat cancer. I think it's something very commendable and heartwarming. But I don't know what that has to do with LinkedIn. I agree. Were all your coworkers from Target IV non-Target schools? Uh, most, if not all, were from Target schools that my firm considered Target. I know I was under fire for people saying, you didn't go to Target school. My definition of Target school is schools that firms directly hire out of and many banks directly hired out of my school. I don't know what to say. Hello, Brian. I'm from Brazil. Boa noite. I'm a big fan of you. Your channel helped me break into B of A. Oh, that's awesome to hear, Victor. I'm so happy for you. Obrigado. Do the rest of the live stream in Korean, <laughs> then I would lose all my audience. That's another reason why I miss Clubhouse. There were Korean speakers I could interact with. So what are the best ways to network an opinion? Um, I think it's first to reach out to school people that you know, uh, people that you already have an established connection to, and then you go from there. I think that's the best way to do it. What dishes have you been cooking at home? I only cook exclusively chicken and rice, eggs and rice, garlic pasta, and marinara pasta. How sad is that? Not the best cook. Favorite Korean dishes. Um, I like to drink to a lot. Um, I like any form of kogi. I like fish. Um, I'm a big fan of the jigas and the kooks. Um, yeah. Did you ever think about getting your CPA? I never did, and I never will. How are your relations with the workplace? Relaxed, strict, far too serious. They're pretty casual. I'm a pretty casual person. In hindsight, probably should have been more professional, but I think I do a good job balancing things. I'm a good relationship manager. Would love to see a related video on this. How would I talk about relationships to the workplace? I can reflect on it. A lot of good video ideas coming from this. I can talk about work-life balance, personal finance, reacting to cringe LinkedIn posts. That's my next on the list. Do you think you have to be highly academically intelligent to break into IB and do the job? Um, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna be blunt. I don't think you have to be academically intelligent. You just have to have grit and somewhat understand how to use a computer. Um, I would say the best bankers were not necessarily the most academically intelligent. I'm not trying to offend any bankers out there, but it's not about being academically intelligent. It's about being one aware, being attentive, being persevering, having grit, um, and knowing how to use Excel. What's your shoe rotation like? I don't know what that means. When do you want to marry? Being in finance hinders your romantic life. Um, I think being in finance definitely hinders your romantic life just because you don't have time. You don't know who to meet. But then it's the whole question of like, are the girls going to like you? Um, slash, are you marryable quality if you don't have a redeeming job, or in this difficult society. Uh, when am I going to marry? Probably before 30. Do you think IB will change significantly? Um, yes, in the sense that they're outsourcing a lot of useless tasks, and I think it's going to become a lot middle, shallow, and bottom top heavy, which a lot of fields eventually become. Full-time recruiting tips, question mark. Um, I'm sorry to be mean, but just watch my channel as a whole, Samuel. There's so many tips I could say. Um, just network a lot. Um, Victor Omastra, tu certo mano, acabe de te enviar un convite no LinkedIn, muy tu ben, encontrar otros brasileros en ese tipo de contuero. No idea what that means. Um, are you great, man? I don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I know Portuguese. Sorry. Did your bank have slightly better hours than BB's? Um, I would say not really, but I think there was a flexible culture where if you were burnt out or if you had something personal to do. They, uh, my bank was very flexible. Will you start a family channel? I will absolutely not. Um, I hope someone can keep me accountable, but I think family channels are toxic. I'm not going to sell my kids um, for YouTube money. He said, awesome to find another YouTube, another Brazilian in this type of content. Ah, okay. Um, okay, I'm guessing MVR, un convite, LinkedIn, muito bem, muito bem, great to encounter to find other Brazilians um, and this type of content. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, Dang, I, should, I wish I knew a third language better. Do you feel like IBS aged you? <laughs> um, it definitely made me fat for a bit, which definitely aged me. Um, and then I think when I exited banking, people were like, whoa, Brian, you look good again. Um, and then I think it also aged me in terms of becoming overly professional, overly cautious about the future because so many people that I worked with were far older than me and already had their life figured out, which where I don't. And I become obsessed with getting my life figured out where other 23-year-olds at my age are having fun being at raves and day trading Bitcoin and thinking they could stay in life. Um, and I'm just kind of past that stage already, which in reality, maybe I should be back in that stage and try to enjoy and relax life a little bit more, but it's so hard to do it. 
Um, been watch. I can read Portuguese because. Wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Currently working at a startup. If you have any experience, what wisdom would you share? Um, be take the initiative. Do things that people don't tell you to do. You just got to do it at startups. I can read Portuguese, but I can't because I speak Spanish. Got it. Been watching your channel forever. Lol. I'm currently summer analyst because of you. That's great to hear, Samuel. Just curious if you had advice that was specific to full time or summer analyst. I mean, your summer analyst role should most likely turn into a full time role if you do it right. Nice to see you back on the back on. By the way, yes, nice accent, Brian. But I was saying that it was cool to find another Brazilian in your channel. I my LinkedIn. Oh, great. No, I have a terrible accent. Sorry, I was trying to recall my time in Brazil and trying to um, understand the different nuances. I know that uh, Portuguese and Spanish share vocabulary, but the, the pronunciation a lot of times is different. Like, um, like muito bem versus like um, sounding out the M, things like that. Did you hang out with your coworkers outside of work? I did. Um, we like drank a lot together, hung out at their houses sometimes. Ha, huh, network works a lot here. Nice job, bro. Um, is it true about inflated egos? <laughs> inflated egos everywhere, Nesty. It's 2021. Everyone has inflated egos. Everyone thinks that they're hot. You should design a social media app that takes the best of LinkedIn and Clubhouse. Are there anything good about LinkedIn and Clubhouse? Um, the best of LinkedIn and Clubhouse is YouTube. YouTube is the best platform ever. Guys, the more and more you mentioned, I really miss Clubhouse. I'm literally on Clubhouse right now. I don't know if you guys are on Clubhouse. Of course, this lighting thing is not working. Um, I'm looking at the people that are on, and it's just sad. It's all these people that I feel like are just on this 24-7 and can't forget the fun that they had prior. Um, I really miss Clubhouse. I feel like it was a lot more fun, and now I'm looking at the rooms, and it's just boring topics, and I feel like it's not really um, – the the exciting place that it used to be. Um, that's so sad. How did you keep up with friends when you're in IB? I talked to people every day. I was in group chats, FaceTime, whenever I had time. It was great. Are you into any sports? Uh, I play golf. Um, I like playing tennis. Those are the only sports I could kind of play and not suck at. Any other sport I am so bad at. I like playing soccer, but I'm so bad at it, so people don't include me. Do you think it's getting easier to for non-targets to break in? Uh, probably not. I think it's, if anything, getting harder. Are some of the senior bankers a bit immature, having likely missed many activities in their youth? That is a great, interesting point. I think about that a lot, um, about whether or not career professionals that are so obsessed with careers are a little off in terms of social acumen because they spent their entire 20s obsessed with their career. I kind of related to people I met at my school that went to boarding school and single gendered schools that are so bad interacting with the opposite gender because they've went to private boarding schools and have had very not socially interacted lives. What type of accounting courses did you take in college? All accounts, uh, financial, managerial, intermediate. I did not take on it though. Any advice on method to avoid burning out? Um, you just gotta make time for yourself and say like enough is enough and literally break out time and say, I'm gonna, Spend this time here. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take an hour off every day, and this is gonna be my time. Whether it be me staring at a wall, or reading a book, or working out, or literally doing nothing, this is my time, and no one's gonna touch it because otherwise you're gonna burn out. And everyone, we need to realize like what is the purpose of doing anything? There has to be an end goal, right? We're not emptiless beings that are data monkeys till we die. Um, you're gonna wake up at age 50 and be like, what am I doing? Um, and you're gonna miss out on all the fun, all the life. Obviously, you have to do the responsibilities. You have to make money you to support the things that you actually want to do by doing the things you have to do. But I think mindlessly going through things that you have to do without any opinion slash direction of what you want to do is very, very dangerous. End goal is very important. Living in the office possible, a deal is closing and you have to sleep under the desk to sleep. The latest I've been at the office is 4.30 a.m. I've seen people not sleep at the office, but stay at the office, go home for like an hour and come back. As silly and toxic as sounds, if you get sick, are you allowed to call in sick and IV? Yeah, yeah, I've done that before. Yes, but secretly no. I don't know what you're talking about, Ricardo, but yes, but no. As we have a minute left, guys, uh, this is a great talk about networking and cold calling. Um, the only <laughs> takeaway from this call is I really miss Clubhouse, and I went back on the app, and no one interesting is on, and all the conversations are all about random things that I don't care about. And how sad is that? Maybe I'll try to make it come back to life. Um, but as always, everyone, thanks for joining the call. Um, thanks for joining the call. Jeez. I'm so invested in being brainwashed. Thanks for joining this session of the Brian Jen Show. 
um, last minute promotions of the day. Um, check out my career consulting service if you need any one-on-one -on -one advice slash consulting for anything beyond banking, just anything. Check out my blog, brianjohn.com, for more of my opinions and thoughts on life and the world and book reviews and travel reviews. Um, every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, I do these live reviews where you can ask me questions live. Um, every Saturday or Sunday, I release a video or two. Um, check out my Korean channel, also linked below. And lastly, um, I will try to revive Clubhouse by myself. Um, thanks, everybody, and have a great night.